It is therefore more logically possible that all the religions in the world are wrong, but it is not logically sensible to say that all the religions in the world are right. It just can't be. The pantheist affirms something very different to the theist. The theist affirms something very different to the atheist. And you go on and on and right down the line and you find out that two contradictory, contradictory systems cannot really be true. Now this is really the fundamental problem that I find as a Christian lecturer and a philosopher dealing with the Islamic worldview. I find at least four basic challenges that they give to us that are impossible to meet that are absolutely impossible to meet because in the process of them stating those arguments against Christianity, those arguments end up in a sense self-destructing. And by the way, I have debated some of the best of them in the other part of the world. They, are not, they have never really responded to this challenge. I'm not talking about their fundamental doctrines. I'm talking about their philosophical assumptions. The first problem I find is this. You see, if their prophet is espoused by them which he is as being a prophet to the world. He is espoused by them as being a prophet to the world, not just to Arabia or to the Middle East. He is the last and the final prophet to the world, and he, they say, performed no miracles because there was no need for it. The Quran is in itself a miracle. But here's the problem. The Quran is in Arabic. And I do not, I am not given the privilege of even challenging its word usage. Please remember, this is vital. Because you see, when you take words or changes in the Quran, which they will tell you have never been made, although some great scholars like Ali Dashti from Iran challenge that assumption, the fact of the matter is, unless I know the language, I cannot perceive the miracle. Unless I know the language, I cannot perceive the miracle, which basically means there are millions of people in the world to whom the language in which their scriptures are written will ever remain completely foreign, and the miracle refer becomes purely one affirmed by those who know the language. It can never be tested in your experience, because the English translations they tell you and any other translations are not accurate except the original as given in the original language. How does one deal with a miracle that is not recognizable by the masses in society? That presents the first problem. There is a second problem it presents to me. They abolish our authority, which is the scriptures, without an original with which to condemn ours. So we are told by the scholars representing that view that the Bible we have is not the original Bible given. It is a corrupt Bible, that there are many contradictions in it. It is not an accurate reflection of Jesus Christ. For example, they espouse that Jesus never really died on the cross, and therefore the resurrection was a pure, purely a fabrication of later collectors of the ideas. Now let me ask you this. How does one ever know something to be truthful if there is not a unit by which to measure it? There is no point of reference. If I were presented with an original that clearly debunks what we do have, then the dialogue can begin. But if I'm told what I have is error-prone and wrong on the basis of something they have never shown to me, how does one begin to dialogue? Do you see the problem? It is like talking about the moon being so far away from here, but saying we have no way to measure it, but take my word for it, that's how far it is. It has, been, it has destroyed our original authority and told us we have no authority now. Therefore, the Bible has been taken away from the Christian and the Christian has got nothing left to defend because he does not have the original Bible. How does one begin a dialogue with that? Thirdly, and very importantly here now, as you know, the Quran was written about six centuries after Jesus Christ. Now, their problem was that what has happened is that the original absolute which was given has been lost. Now remember, their belief in a sovereign God, a very sovereign God, but the original revelation as given in what they call the Injil, the Gospels, has been lost. Now 600 years later comes the latest and the greatest and the final revelation, which means B succeeds A 600 years later, and B overrules A because A is lost. And what we believe is now false, therefore B has to overrule A. Question. If that is the way an absolute can be overruled, what is to keep C from coming in six centuries from now and overruling B? 
And after all, isn't that what Joseph Smith really did? In the founding of Mormonism. That's precisely what Joseph Smith did. He said all of the religions of the world coming centuries after Islam, for example, Mormonism said all of the revelations have all become corrupt. Now he has come out with the last and the greatest and so on. So absolutes keep overruling absolutes without any point of reference for the previous absolute. It is philosophically unarguable. You cannot talk about it because there is no more a possibility of discussing absolutes. That is number three. And number four, this is a sad one, but it is true. Many scholars of that school of thought reserve the right to impugn and debunk truths that we hold about our Lord. But you cannot do the same with the names that are precious to them. You follow what I'm saying? I can be told in the Quran that Jesus never died, which is what it is said out there. And I can have people look at me and say that he, this is a blasphemy. Jesus never claimed to be the Son of God, which is completely wrong. He does claim to be the Son of God. There, there are all kinds of concepts that are treasured truths. The very cross and the empty tomb are so precious to us, and the very person of Christ so precious to us. How does one dialogue with two people talking while A reserves the right to impugn what B is defending, but B is not given the same privilege of closely scrutinizing what A is defending. These points of tension make meaningful dialogue very, very difficult with all respect for the scholarship. That's all I want to say.